All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to go to Google, all right? Go to Google and type in FMCSA. Okay, once you get to Google, you will see that a couple of different ads pop up. These are ads, don't click on them because they're gonna ask you for more money than what you need to pay. Click on Federal Motor Carrier Administration. This is what the official website looks like. Okay, you can see it right here at the top left, fmcsa.dot.gov. Uh, go to the registration tab, click on the actual tab. Okay, it's gonna bring you to this page. You can watch these videos and read all the stuff if you want to, then click get started. Okay, it's gonna ask you to click here and tell them that you understand. You just click and tell them that you understand. But before you do, make sure that you understand that you are applying for your MC. This is your MC, this is your DOT, okay? This is what you need in order to cross state lines and make money in a box truck, okay? It costs $300. If you call, if it, if it costs anything more than $300, then you did something wrong, okay? You also need to make sure that you already have your LLC, that you already have the EIN number. Okay, I already made a video on this. You can go back to my YouTube channel and find that video. Make sure that you have a valid phone number and a professional email. Okay, this is the email that everyone that you talk to, every broker, um, if you're gonna do Amazon Relay, they're gonna see this, okay? Make sure that you have a professional email. It should have your business name in the email address. Okay, and also make sure that your business name is not super complicated or super long or anything like that. My business name is super long and my email is long and it's been a hassle for me because I have to basically walk everybody walk through everybody through every single time the correct email address. It's not simple. So make sure that you have a simple name and a simple email address that people can easily find. Okay, and also have a professional business address. Okay, you can do a home address if you want to, but I recommend getting a virtual address. Okay, make sure that you get a virtual address. Okay, come back here, tell them that you understand. Um, and it's gonna bring you to the official registration system. This is what it looks like. If it looks like anything else, you're probably getting scammed because this is the most recent update in 2022, okay? So here, here we are, click next on the right-hand side of the screen. It tells you, you know, some other stuff that you need to figure out, make sure that you have it. To get here, it tells you some stuff about how to navigate, some terms and definitions and stuff like that. Anyway, just click next again to move forward. It tells you some stuff that you need to have already on standby. And you also need to have your official company officers um, and their title. So if it's you, your own operator. If you have anybody else on LLC, maybe it's your partner, uh, silent partner, you just also need to have them uh, have their information ready as well to say that they are a silent partner. Okay, click next. More information It's just kind of like getting you acquainted with the website, letting you know that you have a financial responsibility, $300 like we talked about. Okay, once you do that, it brings you to this page, letting you know that you have to basically have a process agent. Your process agent is basically how people will get in contact with you if they want to sue you or if anything else goes wrong, they need to be able to get in contact with you. It's a whole complicated way of explaining it, but the short way of saying it is that they need to be able to get in contact with you, the business owner, any event that they need to get in contact with you. You have to do this before your authority will go active. You want to make sure that you do this at least seven days before your authority is supposed to go active. Again, it takes 21 days for your authority to go active. So make sure that you do this at least seven days before. Make sure that you have a registered agent. You can Google a registered agent. It shouldn't cost you no more than $50, a one-time payment. Um, I think the one that I use is like $15 or $20. It's very cheap. I actually don't even remember it. So if you send me a DM or if you comment below or something like that, you let me know that you want to know which one I use. I'll figure out a way to get you that information. Um, but it didn't cost me that much money. It may have cost twenty dollars if I'm not mistaken. So okay, next is basically saying that you have to have the proper insurance in order for your authority to go active again. You want to make sure that your insurance is active and ready to go seven days before your authority is set to go active. Now, again, it takes twenty one days. So once you're two weeks in, make sure that your insurance is ready to go and your truck is ready to roll. I'm not gonna go over all of this stuff. It's just uh, oats and signatures and stuff like that. So just, I'm just gonna skip forward. You can read all of this for yourself. Okay, once you get here, this is basic information for you to basically create 
to create a profile that you're gonna need in order to move forward, right? So I recommend that you have your notes page pulled up so that way you don't get confused because you're gonna need these passwords again later. Okay, you wanna make sure that you create a password. This user applicant um, ID number that you see here is standard, this is what they give you. This is, you know, you don't have to change that. It's just what they're gonna give you. All right, so once you have your notes page pulled up, make sure that you keep track of your passwords because they are gonna ask you for it again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create my password. I'm gonna call it I am Jeff Joseph dollar sign dollar sign. I'll we'll go ahead and applicant contact okay this is just how they're going to contact you if you're the person who's creating this application they want to be able to get in contact with you if they need to verify some information or anything like that so they're going to ask you for this information again if you're the same person creating this application for yourself so be prepared to enter the same information in twice but I'm gonna go ahead and finish entering this information in and I'm gonna fast forward and, I, and I'll catch y'all on the next important part. <laughs> All right, does the applicant have a Dun & Bradstreet number? You should have one if you're trying to build business credit, but I'm gonna say no for the sake of this application. Okay, what is your legal business name? Let's say it is, I am Jeff Joseph Trucking. Okay. All right, business description. I don't have a DBA, so I'm just gonna click next. Okay, is this applicant principal place of business the address the same as the applicant contact? We're gonna say yes but you should have a professional address for your business, not just your home address like I have here. We're gonna say that this is the same. Okay. Now, again, this is gonna ask me for your business information. Obviously you need to put in a correct information for your business. Decided to be able to get in contact with you if they need to get in contact with you about anything to verify your information. But this is also how all the scammers, all the dispatchers, all the marketers are going to get in contact with you immediately after submitting this application. They're going to start bombarding you with offers unless you do it after hours. If you do it during normal business hours, you will immediately start to get marketing. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you put in good phone numbers so that you can get in contact and be in contact with FMCSA. This is also um, when brokers look you up, they'll be able to see these phone numbers. So make sure that you put it in uh, correctly. Okay, your business EIN number. You should have an EIN number for your business. You should go ahead and enter it in. I'm just going to try to create a random one, even though it's not asking, even though it's blurred out, hopefully. Damn, they want a real one. Well, since it's blurred out, I'll go ahead and use my social. Um, but you guys should definitely be using a real EIN number, okay? Is this applicant a unit of government? No, unless you are, but even if you are, you should probably say no because you are a civilian at this point. Okay, business description, form of business. Okay, we're gonna just say that you are limited liability because that's what you should be. And let's just say that you are in the state of Texas or Louisiana. But we're going to say Texas for the sake of this application because my business is based out of Texas. So why not? Okay. Ownership and control. We're going to say that it is a U.S. citizen. Assuming you are civil. All right. Now we've got to go ahead and put in company contacts. Again, like I said, it may seem a little repetitive, 
but I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this information, assuming that you are the same person filling out this information for yourself, then you just enter the same information in that you've already entered in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So what I'm gonna do for the sake of time is I'm gonna fast forward all of this descriptive information and just trust that you have all this information ready to go and you can enter it in uh, when you're prompted to do so. It doesn't make sense for me to go ahead and keep on showing you entering in the same information because it's not your information anyway. So just make sure that you have your accurate, ready to go information. Like I said, you should have a virtual address or some sort of business address. If not, then use your home address. But I'm gonna go ahead and enter in all of this descriptive information and I'll get y'all at the next important part. Once you finish entering in all your information, it's gonna bring you to this verification screen. I'm not gonna scroll down because my actual social security number is on this screen, off screen right now, but I can see it. Um, so I'm not gonna scroll down, but just verify that all your information is true before you click the yellow next button, okay? This is just letting you know what's next and this is important. So let's get right into it. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Will the applicant operate as an intermodal equipment provider? Um, probably not. If you're doing just box trucks, then this is a no for you, okay? This is not you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click no. Yes, you will be transporting property. Will the applicant receive compensation for a business and transporting the property belonging to others? Absolutely. That's the whole point of the game. Okay. Okay. What type of property will the applicant transport? Select like all that apply. Okay. You won't be doing hazardous material. Uh, you won't be doing household goods. You won't be doing anything other than non-hazardous freight. Now listen, listen, even if you plan to do hazardous material or get any other type of cert, uh, certifications, do not put it on this application. We just want to get you approved for your MC and your DOT. You can go back and get the certifications through the proper channels at a later time. But if you put all this stuff on here now, it's going to screw you up and you're not going to get your MC and your authority going. So just trust me when I say just, just for now, do other non-hazardous freight. If you're going to do hazardous material or anything like that, you can get that after your authority goes active, okay? So we're going to click next. Again, non, other non-hazardous freight. Will the applicant transport non-hazardous materials across state lines, other known as interstate? Yes. This is how you get your MC, so yes. Will the applicant transport their own property? No. You shouldn't. Will the applicant transport any passengers? Hell no. Will the applicant provide property or household goods for HHG broker services? No, you're not trying to be a broker right now. Even if you are, you're not doing it right now. This is just strictly for people who are intentionally trying to start a box truck business. So therefore you will not be providing freight forwarding services. So don't even look at it, just keep it moving. You will not have any car, uh, cargo tank facility. Will the applicant operate as a drive away? No, box trucks don't do that. <laughs> you're not a tow company either, so straight up, no. Don't even look at it, even if you're gonna do that later on. Do not worry about it right now. All of this stuff on here, you see all of this? Ignore it, don't look at it. It may be tempting. You may say, I can do all of this. I want to do all of this. Do not click any of it except for general freight. It's already highlighted for you. Keep it moving, okay? You can always come back later and add 
what you want to add to the proper channels later through the proper channels later but don't do that now because you will get tripped up and you want to make sure that your mc and your dot number is good to go within 21 days okay just verify all this information is correct this is the only thing that should be here when it's time for you to click the next button okay okay so now they want the information about your motor vehicles that you plan to operate let's click next okay how many non-commercial vehicles are you going to be operating zero all of your vehicles will be commercial vehicles if they're over 10,000 pounds if you're operating a 24 or 26 foot box truck you are a commercial vehicle congratulations all right the type of vehicles that you're going to drive okay let's just assume everybody here is going to buy their box truck okay if it's a zero if you're not leasing it then it's hold up, zero here zero here for trip lease okay drive away services zero there too if you're leasing like i did then you know this will be a one and own will be zero okay but it's totally up to your situation um it's probably best if you just put here that you own it and everything else is zero okay you want to make sure that this is accurate because you have to go in and put zero for all of them you want to make sure that it's accurate because it's also going to determine how much you have to pay for your ucr you know anything over two is a different fee so if you only have one box truck make sure that you have only one under straight trucks owned okay even if you're renting just say that you have one that you own for now okay everything else should be zeroed out okay please provide the number of commercial vehicles for the panel okay we're not going to canada we're not going to mexico okay although i did i was almost tempted to go take a little <laughs> i was tempted to take a little to alaska one time and um i ended up turning it down because i promised that i would be home by a certain time and obviously driving to alaska would be quite a detour so just make sure that you put all of this as zero for now okay please provide the number of commercial vehicles that the applicant will operate solely interstate commerce okay interstate means that you're going to be crossing state lines okay this is state lines you want to say one if you start with one box truck please provide the number of commercial motor vehicles the applicant will operate solely in intrastate commerce okay intrastate intrastate is just within your state i'm going to say zero because we're going for the mc you don't want to get tripped up you don't want to say that you're going to be just inside your state because then you're going to turn around and only give you a dot number you want to make sure that you get your mc number so you can cross state lines so zero next Okay, just make sure that all this information is accurate. Like you said, um, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to look just like this. If you're trying to get your MC, your DOT, and you got a commercial vehicle, a box truck that is over 10,000 pounds, less than 26,000 pounds, this is exactly what this screen should look like, okay? Next. What is the number of drivers who will operate as interstate? Let's just say that within a hundred air miles radius, we're gonna say zero because we want the MC number, so we're going to say beyond, beyond 100 air mile radius, okay? Let's make it clear that we're, we're going for the MC. What is the number of drivers who will operate solely as interstate? Zero and zero, because none of your drivers will remain in state. Even if they do take a load that's within the same state and within those air miles, we want the MC. So we don't want to get tripped up. We want to make sure that the FMCSA is fully aware that we cross the state lines and we need that MC number. Okay, so what are the number of drivers with a commercial driver? So, okay, your CDL. Okay, if you have your CDL, great. If not, then great. But <laughs> I'm just going to say zero because most people who are driving a box truck don't have their CDL. If you have your CDL, then you can put it in there. If not, don't worry about it. Just put zero. Um, like, again, I'm just going to assume that none of your drivers will be in Canada or Mexico. Um, and even if they do, let's just for now assume that they won't so that you don't get tripped up. Okay, driver summary should look exactly like this. If it doesn't look like this, then perhaps you did something wrong. 
okay? They want to talk about the financial responsibilities, okay? The FMCSA needs to ask a few additional questions to determine financial responsibility amounts. Click next to proceed, let's proceed, okay? In the operation classification section of this application, you specify the entity will be transported property interstate and, and for compensation. Will any of this property get transported in a vehicle over 10,000 pounds? Absolutely. In a box truck, you're over 10,000 pounds. Okay, the FMCSA has determined that the applicant will operate for higher property cargo general freight. The companies estimate financial responsibility minimum by the Leo case, basically saying that you got to have the insurance, which is $750,000 before your authority will go active. If you're doing Amazon, then it needs to be a million dollars. Okay, they want some more information. Let's give it to them. Okay, affiliation with others does the applicant currently have or has had within the last three years of the data filing for the application relationships involving common stock, common ownership, common management, common control. Uh, we're just gonna say no, even if you do say no, unless you like big time, you know, you you deep in the game and you well known in these streets for being an affiliate of one of these, then just say no. If you worked at the facility or you got a cousin or something like that, it doesn't apply to you. So we're just gonna say no. Okay, summary. All right, so we should be just about finishing up is asking for a certification statement. Basically saying that everything you've entered in is true to your knowledge. So let's go ahead and enter in this information and say that I do. Okay. So I am. Okay e-signature password now i told y'all you see where it's the applicant password you got to come back here to your notes page like i told y'all and go ahead and copy copy and paste told you i was gonna ask for it again okay i put oh shit. okay i put that uh i was the owner make sure everything is cap sensitive too so Make sure that you put it exactly how you did it the first time. Okay, next. Compliance certification. Okay, you wanna make sure that I'm compliant. You can pause and read this if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Does the applicant certify it is willing and able to provide the proposed operation and services and to comply with all the, listen, okay. Yes, I certify. You can read, pause and read this if you want, but of course, obviously, if I'm filling out this application, then I am intentional about driving a box truck. Okay, again, you can pause and read this if you want, but basically it is basically making sure that you are aware what you are signing up for, everything that you put in this application. This is what you say you about that life. It's making sure that you are serious about this and that you're certifying that you're gonna do exactly what it is you said. Okay, does the applicant certify it is not currently disqualified from operating commercial vehicles? I hope not, but if you are, good luck. Does the applicant certify it understands that the agents for service of process designation will be deemed? Okay, so this is basically saying that you have to have a process agent and that this person or this company is responsible for getting contact with you in all 49 states in the event that you're being sued or in the event that some legal action is needed, they're gonna be the people that's gonna be contacted. You have to submit this to the FMCSA within 21 days for your authority to go active, okay? You wanna do this around week two, so that way you can make sure that you get your authority active within the 21 days, on the 21st day. Does the applicant certify that the carrier is not prohibited from filing this application because of, yes, you're not doing nothing shady. You're just, you know, doing it for the first time, getting going, okay? If the applicant's registration is currently revoked, does the applicant certify, that, okay, it's not revoked, but we're gonna go ahead and say, let's go. Okay, again, it's asking for the application's uh, password, copy paste next 
okay, we wanna make sure all of this is legit. I certify, I certify, I certify. I'ma do what I said I'ma do. So now you gotta take an oath. The FMCA requires you to take an oath. So take your oath. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my information in again one more time. Take my oath, the oath that I've already taken and so far have upheld and I plan to continue to do so. Okay. Again, copy paste from your notes. Owner, and the date is there, boom. Okay. Okay, so at this point in the application, you're basically creating a portal. This is the same portal that you'll be able to use at a later date whenever you want to get in and check the status of your uh, MC or your DOT or you know any violations that you might have. This is the, the portal information that you're creating right now. This is how you create it. In doing so, you'll also be able to make your payment, your $300 payment. So this is the furthest that I'm going to go. As you can see, it says 99% because the only thing after this screen is they're going to take $300 from me. And obviously I'm not going to do that because I already have my MC and my DOT. So I hope this video has been helpful to you, but this is the furthest I'm going to go again. After you enter this information in, it's just going to ask you to take your money. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below or send me a DM and I'll catch y'all in the next video.